open oh everybody good morning we're coming to you live right here from inside the main build facility bubba's exotic motorsports we're in beautiful sunny south florida i'm tom and we all know the master entering stage right good morning bub how are we doing today it is friday so it's friday it is brutally hot here for some reason in south florida i'm totally dripping sweat right now and i haven't stopped working since 5 50 this morning for some reason why haven't you stopped working bub because I have a lot of demands. It is Friday, Bob. Friday, we're pushing. Who puts the demands on me? Friday, fr it's not true, ladies and gentlemen. I'm inside with papers that are stacked up like this, trying to get everything. But we got a lot of stuff going on, man, right now. Tons and tons of stuff. This is the world's first, Bob, 2018 twin turbo, six speed, five liter Mustang ever built, Bob. So let me just start off by saying, so this paint itself, this is a, what you would think would be a custom order from Ford, but not, it's just more of a limited color. Yeah. Um, it's not like you have to custom order this. They do have these things sitting in F-150s and F-150 Raptors, 250s, 350s, all the above. Um, they do have, this is a mass production paint. It is their ruby red metallic. And let me tell you, for a factory production coming from Ford down the assembly line, not a base coat, clear coat, but a three stage paint, base, candy tint, and then you're clear. That is incredible that Ford has stepped their paint jobs up to that level in terms of three stage paint jobs right out of the gate and paint match on this very hard to do you have to be a pro to do it and let me tell you we have mastered it here at BEM. it's spot on bub for example let's show everybody this right here this is the factory three coat color uh three stage paint three stage that's the correct way we want yeah. to say that right bub this is actually and it shows everybody the level of detail you go to here at BEM. this is actually bub tell everybody what this is right here that i'm holding up so yeah props that's a uh, hat it's a hat yes ladies and gentlemen it's a hat it's not it also um, could be an upside down mustache like this. I feel that like would be a right side up mustache, no, right? You put it the other way. Oh. That would I'm going to do it like Paul Senior from OCC. Our good friends up at Orange County Choppers, but we got to talk about them guys. Okay. Senior style. So I'll tell you what. So these things, as you know, it's all about the details. Sometimes you don't need to go over the top when you are doing just basic little things that maybe change your ride or set it apart from another one in a parking lot or at a car show. In this case, doing a set of brake caliper covers, right? Now this car is equipped with a performance pack from Ford, so it does come with a factory Brembo brake kit. That's probably gonna hit the floor, so I'll take it back in the paint shop in a minute. Here we go, wait for it. Okay, success. That's, so bad, That's not right? gonna last. We'll wait and see how long that stays. Uh, these are equipped with the Brembo six piston brake calipers in the front. I don't know why Ford goes so big in the front and still stays single piston caliper in the rear. So we aren't going to do any upgrades there because they do stop exactly how we need this ride to stop. What we wanted to do was go ahead and take it over the top. The client didn't want to do brake caliper coating, which you could take the brake calipers off the front and the rear, and you can do those in a custom powder coat. We could paint them in the base clear in the color of the car. But for the simple fact that, like I mentioned earlier, this is a Brembo six piston caliper in the front and then a cheap cast single piston yeah, caliper in the in rear. The Aesthetically, even if we went that far and did that much time and labor and materials in terms of making those calipers look the red color of the car, they would still look cheap in the rear because exactly, it's just yeah. that little poo-poo yeah. cast caliper, right? So what we did was we decided to opt for a set of brake caliper covers. It slips on, it's very easy to do, super, super cheap. These are like 200, 250 for the set. Then you get them, we get them out of the box. Of course we paint them. By the time we're done, they'll be worth six or 700 bucks by the time the install is done and the paint's done only because it costs materials. So it is a little bit more expensive to do it this way, but the front covers and also the rear covers, which I haven't finished yet, the rear covers will be able to give you that aesthetically even look from the side of the car. So it's not gonna look like a massive six piston caliper in the front. It's some dinky ugly thing in the rear that you just see like the cast material. It is gonna give you kind of a visual effect of nice full brake calipers when you look through those black wheels that are on this thing. Beautifully done, bub. Wanna read something that just came in? You're gonna really like it, bub. I'm sure you won't be surprised. That one I haven't cleaned up yet. Well, what, I'm what I was gonna say, bub, is the quality of work that you put into the, even these brake covers is second to none. You take the time to take everything down and then you hand and uh, you, you do all of the internal paint work, the inscribing, by hand, Bob. Yeah, so I mean, well, there's no other way to do it. It's, um, you know, to get these done, and again, this is the fronts were labeled in Mustang. You can get these pretty much labeled in any possible way you want. If you want them with the 
Ford logo, if you want them with the running, running horse, the pony, the Mustang pony, the traditional logo, you can get them with those. You can get them to say Cobra or SVT, sure. GT. You can get them to say anything you possibly want. We just went basic generic Mustang GT because we didn't want a bunch of GT letters coming through the front caliper area because the front fenders, as you see, do say GT on the side of them. So we didn't want to just have that GT logo slapped all over this car. So we cleaned it up. We kept Mustang on the front, did a subtle GT on the rear for the caliper fitment. Super, super clean, very small, subtle upgrades, but will make the biggest difference in the world in the way this thing looks, especially now that we just set stance on this ride with Steeda's new Magna Ride one inch drop springs. That was just done last week and we got the full alignment done. And let me tell you, the car not only is sitting tight and right, but it handles insane. I want to let you know, Bob, that I just received an amazing, an amazing review on you from the owners, the Galbraiths of the 67 uh, Camaro over there. Oh, that's really one nice. of our former producer, Casey uh, Rivard, he's out there. Casey, man, how in the hell are you, man? Long time no see. Quality producer, Bob, did great work. Uh, we loved him uh, being here. And I'm pretty sure, I, I haven't followed too much of it, but I think Casey broke off and is doing his own company now, if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken on that, but I know I've seen a lot of good work coming out of his end. His quality of work was always good, man. Yeah. It's congratulations on continuing to climb the ladder. We have had a 67 Camaro sitting in my garage for many years, dreaming of making her right one day. We had no idea where to go or what to do. Enter Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Dom and Bubba met with us and quickly eased our minds. Currently, the car is in the middle of its restoration and the work is out of this world. We could not ha be happier with the results. Thank you so much. No, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time in a world where people do nothing but post negative things, taking the time out of your day. Uh, I know how busy you truly, truly are and writing such a nice comment. Casey Rivard says, hey, I love that color. Casey, we'd love for you to be in here doing the pre and post production of the number one rated internationally syndicated <laughs> live stream. I think it would be great. Bob, I want to Casey also left, you stressed him out too much. No, I didn't. Man. He did. Uh, well. He said resignation. Thomas stresses me out. That well, was an excuse. That's kind of something that Paul Sr. and I have in common. We're not afraid to get in there and just bash heads a little bit to try to get things done. It's a successful manner, Bob, in which things get done. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't get frustrated at my work, and it comes together pretty clean. It does, Bob, but, you know, uh, we kind of handle things from a different perspective, and we see things from a different perspective, so a different approach is often a vote. But it's only worse, Casey, since you uh, moved on to your own endeavors. Uh, things have just gotten crazier and crazier around here, Bob. I want to talk a little bit about some things that are going on up at Orange County Choppers with Paul oh, Sr. and Johnny. We're going to come back to this, Bob, but we promised We're not even done with the Mustang. I know that. We're not. But we promised everybody last Friday that we had some information we wanted to release. Uh, we have been talking back and forth with the Tuttles uh, personally. We can't release all of the information, but I'd like you to kind of break into kind of some of the great stuff that's going on up there at OCC. Listen, today. let me just go plain and simple here. Everybody knows, and we'll sum it up really fast. So everybody knows that OCC, Orange County Choppers, has been a benchmark in the chopper oh. industry for a very long time along with my good friend, your good friend, Billy Lane from Choppers oh, Inc., yeah. Jesse James from West Coast Choppers. All the Let love, me tell man. you, all of the legends, all of these iconic Bruce guys Bunks, that you grow up, you watch them, they literally give you an art, this, this confidence that you can do what it is that they're, being, you know, they're showing on TV. 90% uh, of the guys out there can't do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although they try. Exactly. Um, I'll tell you what, man, it is great to be able to you know, watch and not only be side by side with these guys, but also watch the forward progression that everybody's doing. Of course, as you know, with today's technology, you have to continually advance forward. Yes. Yes. So you don't just flatline and stay, and then you fall by the wayside, and eventually you're flatline, you got nothing going on. Um, so you always want to continue to evolve. And I'll tell you what, another thing that these guys at OCC are doing is that right now, now not only doing the corporate style builds, which as you know, are the serious, serious high-end bikes, um, something that, and, and this isn't wrong, but something that's out of reach for most people, mm -hmm. just from a financial standpoint. But there's gonna be, is- I got more. Yeah, I was gonna ask you a question though. Is, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Let me see so, what that you have the high-end style bikes and just like we have here at BEM, you have that very high-end and you have that, me that, that medium, that middle grade, mm -hmm. and then you have that low end. Mm -hmm. All of them, the quality is still the same. You're just getting something different, different. for That's each correct. one. Well, let me tell you, get ready guys, because here now comes. you will be able to afford easily, and let me tell you easily, all we can say. cheaper than Harley Davidson, OCC bikes. That's all we can say right now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're very, very honored. 
to be able to talk. Uh, we'll talk more about it. We can't get into the details. I asked special permission of Paul Sr. last night. He said not yet. He's not ready for it to break. That's uh, right. We'll be uh, bringing you the exclusive. And they've asked us to be part of it, and I couldn't be prouder, bro. Yep, and super cool. And it's because cool. of who you are and your build style. I'm very proud of you. Uh, that's a huge step uh, forward. Well, I know this much. It's like I told Sr. the other day when I talked to him. Even at this point in time, and anywhere throughout my history and my career, I've never been able to afford his highest end bike. And there's nothing say that wrong with that. Conference. But that's normal when you talk numbers north of 100, 150, 200. And that goes with cars, bikes, trucks, doesn't matter what Good you're point, building, man. even Jeeps. Good point. Um, you know, and there are guys dumping stupid money into Jeeps now. Hitting 100 grand in a Jeep is pretty freaking easy anymore. Mm -hmm. And most people would never put that much sure. money into a Jeep yeah. Wrangler. Um, so it's like you really think about it. But now with this affordable line coming out, that's going to give me that OCC quality style and design. I probably will be one of the first ones in line to buy one of those bikes. I'll tell you what, man. We couldn't be prouder. The, the, yep. the, the Tuttles have been family friends of ours for a very long time. They're, they're the hardest working people out there in the industry. The morals, values, the ethics cannot be questioned. They're just amazing people, bud. Yeah. I want, so that's why I wanted to stop and jump in there, because I felt like you were at a point maybe to talk a little bit about it. We can't give many uh, details about it, bud. Well, you're just going to have to wait and stay tuned. It's that's, that simple. That really is the case. We man. might end up doing a photo shoot here with a couple of them. We might end up doing photo shoots up in OCC with them oh, in the next you, three, four weeks. So yeah. you'll just have to wait and see. Bub, did you see, of course you did. We're on, still not back to the Mustang. Did you see the uh, on our group chat? Uh, the bike for the second episode I of saw the it. new series. I saw it. <laughs> oh, God almighty, man. All right, so on from that stuff, let me get back on track here because this guy will drive us off the train rails for a very far distance. This 2018 Mustang, it is twin turboed by John Uris, the owner of Hellion Turbo. Let me tell you, these things are running Precision 6262 ceramic ball bearing turbos this thing spools up like an absolute monster laying down at the tire on pump gas at the tire 666.7 horsepower and that is a pretty solid respectable number again in today's world these numbers that i throw out like 600 700 they're seeming basic they truly are they're pretty basic numbers anymore but on a full stock setup literally everything stock the hellion twin turbo kits are designed out of the box to be bolted on stock application vehicles and to get that kind of number at your tire, not at the crank. So typically figure between 15 and 20% loss from the crank through your drivetrain. By the time you go through your clutch disc, so you go through your transmission, through the gears, through the drive shaft, all the way through your rear end, you typically lose between 15 to 20% yeah. of that power. So this car is probably just north of that 780, 800 horsepower mark at the crank. Pretty freaking respectable number on a stock motor. Bob Nate Leak, your brother says, good morning. Jacob Kruger, Kruger says, Jake, tell me where you are, man. Where are you call, uh, riding into us from? What is the color on the Mustang, bub? Is it a tricoat? Yeah, so that's actually a great question. This is from Jake, you said, yes? Yes, Jake. Okay, mm -hmm. so this actually is Ford's Ruby Red Metallic, and this is a tricoat system. A little bit harder to shoot, especially when you're doing things like paint matching. It does take a little bit more skill, and it's one of those things where you just have to be good and have a great set of eyes at it. But as you can see, as he's holding up these brake caliper covers here, the client wanted us to just do something subtle, but clean, not do that traditional like bright gloss red brake caliper, the bright yellows or the bright golds or the matte blacks. He wanted to do some brake caliper covers that match the car. Actually, you kind of suggested. A little it. aggressive, little clean, kind of that in between right there. So that's exactly what we did. It is a tri-coat system, three coats base, which is your, just your basic ruby red. Then you have three coats of your tint coat to give you that crazy pearl metallic. And this thing, just the light shifting that this thing does, the color tones and shift that it does in the sun, our lighting in here in the shop, the fluorescent lighting. It just looks so beautiful, I can't it's, tell you. It's great, Bob, because I just actually pulled one of the film lights over so people could see it. These professional LED lights are very bright. They give it a nice look. Casey Rivard, a former producer here at PEM, says, love the color. Jack Bias up there in Canada. How are we, my friend? Sweet color, he says. Bob. That's right. How about that? Nate, your brother says, good morning, Bob. And, you know, it's <laughs> morning, Nate. So it's all about the little details, right? And some guys really have trouble in the industry knowing how to theme and properly tie things in, whether it's on the outside of the car, bringing them in to the interior, maybe the engine compartment. Now, it's totally different on the West Coast scene. Typically, when you open the hood, why are you looking around like you need something? I need to go pee. We'll wrap this up. Uh, so like Just West kidding, Coast Bob. cars, for example, you open the hood on those things, and for some reason, it's all about two-toning, right? So the inside engine bays of West Coast-style cars um, are very poppy and in your face, like they will be a bright lavender color in the engine bay, the fender walls, the firewalls. Um, that's not how we do it here at BEM. Now we can, of course, if that's what you want, it is all client based, but we like to be very clean, make things look very mass production, but also very modified, but have that appearance that they should be there. So little things, 
we went through, we did the brake caliper covers. We just finished doing the intercooler charge pipe this morning. Going on this twin turbo setup coming from the intercooler to the intake manifold itself. We just did that this morning and pulled it out of the paint shop. So it's a little things like that that are actually gonna give you that little pop of color and taste when you open that hood. Half the covers are missing right now because I am doing some more work on this twin turbo system. So there's a lot of plastic paneling missing, the engine cover is missing, and the strut brace is missing. One of the things the client was curious about was whether or not we should two-tone this strut brace or if we should leave it the factory silver. So my go-to for this client was something simple. Why go and overdo it? You don't want to necessarily overkill this engine bay with all the red. You're going to have little pieces that tie in. You'll have the front bumper that's going to be red. You'll have this that'll be red on your intercooler piping. Your inner fender liners will be red. So you want to have that broken up just a little. You don't want to shoot everything and make it look overdone. The only other things in this engine compartment that are silver are the two beautiful twin turbos in the front and that intake manifold in the center. So I actually did opt to leave the strut tower brace factory from Ford with the performance pack exactly as it is. I feel like that's gonna break it up just enough. So Bob, let's point out if we can, please, let's show everybody where the turbos are located on this vehicle. Yep, so these are a sister setup. They're running right here. Sister setup, can you tell us what that means, They're please? twins. Twins. Everything's identical about these. 62, 62, size of the intake and exhaust housing on them. These things do spool up like monsters. They are capable of 30 plus pounds of boost. Precision built, so they are the top quality owned by Turbonetics out there in the industry. These don't get much better. You can go larger, you can go smaller, depending on your application. This setup is set at seven and a half pounds, which again is laying this thing down at 666 horse at the tire, right about 800 at the crank. So it is more than enough on this stock motor without any chance of hurting anything internally at seven and a half pounds of boost. Again, being capable, the turbos themselves of going upwards of 30, 35 pounds, depending on your waste gates. No chance is that going to happen on this motor until we go super heavy inside. So, Bob, do you have any fears or worries about the motor being damaged at those uh, at those pressures or those? Boosts? At this pressure, this is a totally comfortable pressure, man. This is uh, this is like absolute normal. If Ford were to have built this car with twin turbos, this is exactly how you would get it. Seven and a half pounds of boost, totally safe and reliable. Totally safe and reliable, Bob. So this car is going to kind of produce. What kind of gas mileage do you think this will come out that will come out of this now, Bob? So here's what's nice, man. So turbos can be one of two things. They can be super efficient or they can be super powerful and fuel robbing, right? If you are just out doing a cruise, this thing takes no more fuel to run it and maintain it. If your air fuel ratios are all set exactly where they should be based on your tune that's installed, this thing will be cruising in that 17, 19 mile an hour uh, or 19 mile per gallon fuel economy just as a street cruise. Now you go wide open throttle, that's oh. gonna dip super, super low, probably in the 10s, 11s, maybe even 12, just because of how much power and fuel you are demanding to produce. Good morning to Anthony Focus. How are you? Well, to Anthony. Anthony, good morning. I have a, a, to read this to you. What's up, Tom? I towed the Camaro. Thanks for the tour of your shop and a great experience, Bob. Good. You're very welcome, Tony. It's our pleasure, man. And thank you for letting us be part of your life. And thank you, Tony, for joining us here right now for the number one rated internationally syndicated daily live stream. We appreciate it. It's a, it was also just a great pleasure meeting you as well, man. We enjoy all of our fans from around the world. And if we can touch people's lives in a positive way and make a difference, we truly, truly, truly like that don't we Bob that's right so it's all good Bob. lots of great things coming in about you Bob and the build here the colors man just I can't say enough from everybody uh, thank you for everybody you know reaching out to now us if you guys haven't also so this car has been in progress at BEM here for a couple months now we have a lot of custom carbon pieces coming from Anderson composites a front lip to get rid of this poo poo black plastic one also side skirts and a rear diffuser along with a custom hood that's going to be a super snake style design which is a twin cowl we actually did have one sent in for this car, but of course our supplier sent us in a 17, which is totally different than an 18. Well, we didn't even have the car at that point and we weren't sure that it was gonna fit. So we went ahead and painted it and it doesn't fit. So we're stuck with a hood. If you guys need one, why don't you tell the truth about painted what, and ready to go. Tell the truth about what really happened. He ordered the wrong part. Um, and I tried to paint it and I used a rattle can. No, no chance. So it is actually shot in the, the tri-coat, ruby red metallic. It's ready to go, 15 to 17 Mustangs, Super Snake style. So that right thing on, is man. sitting on standby, ready to go. I'll tell you what, if it was in gloss black, it would actually be on the front of the SEMA Mustang that's sitting in my garage. I will tell you, I do think I like that hood more than the gp yeah, you the r hood that I did for it for SEMA. So I may even just go shoot that in the paint code G1, which is Ford Shadow Black. 
black with a little blue metallic. A lot of people probably don't know that, but there is blue metallic flake in Forge Black. That's right, there is. Good morning to Nick Jackson. Nick, please tell us where you're joining us from. Welcome to the BEM family. Nick would like to say, Bub, I love the Mustang. You guys have done a great job. Thank you. Yeah, if, uh, if you guys haven't seen some of this build, go out to our Instagram, please, it's, or straight to our website, bubbasexoticmotorsports.com. If you scroll down, you'll see our Instagram link right there. If you click on that link, you'll actually see just recently some side shots of this before after of the full Steeda suspension package that we put on the car. So you can actually see that difference. Although it's subtle, three quarters of an inch to one inch drop is typically what you gain from the Steeda with MagnaRide suspension, the electronic dampening system. You will see that before after, and even though it seems three quarters, one inch is not a lot, Trust me, it gives you the difference of looking like you're ready to go off-roading versus looking like you're ready to hit the track. So, Bub, let me ask you a question. You're getting a lot of people coming in and saying, great job, great job, great job. Let's talk about the reliability of this build. Uh, typically, when you have cars go in for this, you are one of the top three designers, builders, and fabricators in the world today. We're very proud of that. But typically, when cars go in like this, in fact, when this car came in initially, there were some severe drivability issues. Will those problems continue to exist once it leaves? No, so, you know, one of the biggest problems that we had with this car was, um, you know, and myself, we were great friends with John Uris, the owner of Hellion Turbo. Good guy, man. Um, so, these companies, when you design anything in the aftermarket industry, you have to understand, guys, like when you're building and designing something for aftermarket that does not exist and has its own R&D built into it, you have to take and incorporate an aftermarket product into a stock product. You're taking two pieces and trying to make them fit together. So in this case, a stock 18 Mustang six-speed manual, you're trying to fit two twin turbos to it. Nobody has mastered unlocking these computers yet. No one has mastered tuning them yet because there were none done with manual transmissions. That's where in boosted applications, you have a lot of struggle. Correct because boosting is all about your tune, the way it performs, the way it runs, the way it idles, if it's lean, if it's rich, if your motor lasts, if it's reliable, all of these things will come in based off of one thing and that is the tune. And that's where you have to just spend countless hours trying to get it right. Even the world's best tuners won't get in on the first shot. You have to spend plenty of time. I'm not sure how well that's gonna be with the light shining in the camera. Should be, how about that? Is that what so like? as you can see, so this car's gone through, I would say north of 100 hours of tuning, and that's a lot of tune time on a motor, but to produce reliable, efficient, and strong power, that is what it takes, especially when you're building that first tune. Now what's great is once the tune's done, any other guy that has an 18 Mustang, that is twin turboed at seven and a half pounds of boost with a six speed manual, can take this same tune file and just plug it right into the car, and it is done in less than two minutes. That's where the breeze comes in. In this case, you can see all of the tuning hours have built up to a lot of richness on these plugs. So we are gonna go ahead and swap out these plugs for the first time. It's about a thousand miles on this car. Now that we have the tune set dead on exactly where we want it, drawing peak performance, dead on air fuel ratios at 12 and a half to one at wide open throttle pulls, right between 14.5 and 14.7 at an idle, 13 and a half on a cruise. We are dead on where we need to be with this car the efficiency, the reliability, the power band, it is so strong, it's unbelievable. Literally a tire shredder through fourth gear. But, uh, but Nick Jackson said, can't uh, wait, cannot wait to go single turbo on my competition orange Mach 1. What year is that? Let's uh, Maybe you can give him some technical advice. And Nick, I want you to know he's from Bangor, Maine. Thank you. Nice. They're in Bangor, Maine. You guys are good people, man. Salt of the earth people up there. I was trying to show that plug. It didn't come through as clean as I wanted. Bub, uh, there are two things. I wanted to show how black that plug was done uh, because the tune was not done properly. That's why the car wound up with you. Again, this is the world's first 2018 six-speed five-liter twin turbo right. ever built. This is another first coming out of BEM. Um, but, but the other thing is, when you tell everybody when you're building boosted applications, okay, um, this car came stock from the factory, non-boosted, mm -hmm. okay, that they call that naturally, naturally no, aspirated, natura yeah. naturally aspirated, okay, and the plug gap was set at 60,000, so mm -hmm. I believe, is that correct, the... It could be 45, 50, 60. This range was about 45 factory. So, and now when you do a boosted application, let's talk about something that's very imperative that 99.9% .9 of people overlook when you do a boosted application in the spark plugs. So that's almost key. Number one is uh, a lot of guys really screw up. They don't understand that when you rock a naturally aspirated setup, there's no other additives or other formulas that you need to count and factor in when you're building horsepower. You set your tune and that is it. The motor is only going to do what it can naturally do in terms of sucking air into the motor through whether like a cold air intake, some sort of source of air intake itself, plus the flow going out of the motor. That's all just going to be what it is. When you are working forced induction, you are forcing air into that motor and it's going to change from idle to mid-range RPM to high RPM to shifting gears. 
all of that air pressure that's being forced in is not being done from the motor itself by itself. It's being pushed in by some sort of source, whether it's turbocharged or supercharged. One is belt driven, one's exhaust driven, both forcing air into the motor. And all of that is going to change what happens internally of this motor. So you have to make sure everything lines up around it. Number one key that most people don't understand is they start doing these mods, they start putting super heavy boosts on these motors, and then before you know it, they throw it on the dyno and the car is flatlining, it's falling all over itself at 4,500, 5,000, 5,500. These go up to 7,500 RPM, so they are up there a little bit higher. But you start looking at those flat spots and people just keep dumping more and more and more fuel. 90% of the time, that's probably not your issue. If your AFRs are right, cruising all the way up to that certain point, probably what's happening is, and a common problem in supercharged or boosted applications, turbos in, ca in this case, you blow out spark. And it is just that simple. You, don't they call that sniffing the kernel, sniffing you out the kernel or something? You can call it whatever you want. Is that what they call sniffing it? Sniffing the cocaine, blowing the kernel, doing That's something you're yes, doing. Yes, exactly. Uh, blowing so, the kernel and sniffing cocaine, what the hell? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I'll tell you what, that comes from literally adding that extra airflow that the motor's not natural to doing. And those plugs from the factory were gapped at a certain rating that was meant for the natural draw of air into the motor and the natural draw of air out of the motor. That is set at say 45 thousandths or 50 thousand spark plug gap and it's all about those little details, 20 thousandths of an inch. In this case, Hellion does require and recommend that you drop your stock Ford plugs, not NGKRs, not Bosch, not AC Delco, not E3. Your stock Ford, stock Ford, plugs, Ford plugs drop the gap at 25 thousandths and that will keep these plugs from blowing out. So, Bub, Nick says he's got a 2004 aluminum 4.6 four valve with the okay, TR3650 yeah, yeah. tranny. Okay. And he says you have to run cooler plugs. Is that true? Is it in his application, would he run a cooler plug? Yeah, that's right. This? It's, uh, you know, in a boosted application there, same thing. You'll want to run maybe a step cooler. In this case, that's not what you would do, actually. For, uh, Hellion found out that in their R&D, which is who you want to trust, you want to trust the guys Absolutely. who have designed the systems, who have spent countless hours in it. So, in his case, whatever his force induction app may be, you want to trust whoever that provider and that installer is. If they've told you two steps cooler, three steps cooler, one step cooler, stock Ford plugs, um, some companies just switch and go straight to NGKRs. If people are telling you that, it's for a reason. So trust it and go with exactly what they say and leave it. Don't then, dick with it from there. Don't try to move it five thousandths one way or another. Trust exactly what has been told to you by the R&D of that company. It was done for a reason. It's tested. Put it in. And if you have any other problems, move away from that and go find out what the other issue is. Okay, Bob, as one of the best builders, that's great advice, okay? However, what about these online forums where you've got one person say, well, I would try this, or I would do this, you, or I would do that, or you know, I forums, think this is what you need to do. Forums get people in a lot of trouble. They do. So, forums can be great at times, and trust me, I've even used forums before. Forums can be great at times, but also they can be a total witch hunt. You know, there can be guys out there with no knowledge at all, and maybe they had some rare case of some partial thing that one time, one in a million chance happened with their car and then they send all these other people down that same hunt for no reason at all and it may just be something as stupid as... It's a as rabbit hole, isn't it? X. You know, it may be something very small that's totally unrelated but this one guy has talked up just enough that's piqued everyone's interest that sends you on a 10 hour mission to go find it. You've taken half your motor apart and you still haven't found the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, that's very, very good advice from Bob. And take his advice. He stepped out of high school at the age of 14 to open this business and he's now 30. He's got 16 years of very qualified experience behind him. He's been featured in every magazine. His builds have won at SEMA. He knows what he's doing. If you have a question, sales at Bubba's Exotic mm -hmm. Motorsports. Sales at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. I personally answer everything that comes through the door. Bob and I have a morning huddle at 5.30 every morning. We talk about the emails that have come in. I will personally respond back to you. doesn't matter how many we get. I take the time to do it. Hi, good morning to Ray Montalvo. He's still out there with us. He's a ways away, Bob. That's and right. We want to say good morning to him. So my well. key to everyone out there, my personal and professional tech tip and advice tip, anytime you're working with aftermarket parts, it doesn't matter if you're doing turbos, if you are doing spark plug wires, if you are doing different oil, if you know, maybe you're switching brands, if you are doing different exhaust systems, look at what the manufacturer of that company, not Ford for example, look at the manufacturer of that company has suggested for their install instructions and you will probably have a seamless installation. I know a lot of people out there don't like to read instructions. I know oh, a lot of people out there like to just rip through boxes and pull the parts out and not worry about the instructions but it's probably one of the number one things you can do is take the time to not only study the product that you're putting on your car, but also have a thorough understanding of what that product's supposed to do. And you'll know if you're a do-it-yourself or you'll know how to judge and feel that difference before you did the work and after the work. And Bub, it's just about 
read the instructions. You're a guy that if you did this installation today and you had another one come through the door tomorrow, I'd still read, read the instructions you'd read again. read the instructions again. Just to Nobody's make sure that memory is that perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how good you are. You, you still take the time, slow it down. If I'm doing these caliper covers, they clamp on the same exact way, but I'll still check them. You know 100%. that all these companies, we talk about daily evolution with technology, maybe we got a batch of these this week and maybe next week when we get our bulk Something order changed. that comes in, maybe they found out that there was a little 10 thousandths milling issue and they had to do a little modification. So now they sent you new brackets or a clip design. It may change, the smallest piece could be detrimental. Could make it. Just like I mentioned, 20 thousandths of a spark plug gap could be the difference of 700 horsepower or 400. I want to say good morning or uh, congratulations, bub. The ratings on our iTunes-based podcast are blowing through the roof, as you have seen this week. It is just another great step forward, bub. Good stuff. People love hearing what you've got to say from a technology standpoint. I love helping bring it out there to them. That's right. It's a lot of fun. We enjoy yep. coming into people's homes, bub. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Anything special going on this weekend, bub? Nope. What do we got? Nothing. 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 At all. Nothing. Podcast tomorrow? Nope. Re, uh, we're doing, we're re-airing one, correct? Yep. We have a re-air. Actually, this will, this episode will probably air out there for. Yeah. Us. So uh, you guys will stay up with us again. If you aren't following us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is your social media platform is, go to our website at bubbasexoticmotorsports.com. Not only do we have an online store with all the products that we use at BEM in house. We literally sell them directly as wholesale through our site, so you can get the best of the best, even if you're just doing the project yourself. But also subscribe to everything that we have on there, and it will go live in your pocket, whatever it is. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Hulu, Netflix, Ding Drive Dang, TV, whatever all these them. other media platforms yep. are. We have hundreds of them out there. Subscribe to it, and anything we are doing, whether it is live, we are remote doing stuff, whether it is projects in the shop, even crazy online sales. Bub, a lot of good things happening. Look for a split on our website. We're going to develop, uh, we're splitting the uh, retail side away from the uh, website, and we're going to be featuring more of the, the builds and technical stuff on the website uh, so that people have more, they have a different uh, way to look at things. That's right. It's going to be pretty cool, Bub. Yep. Thank you, Bub. That's it. Appreciate it, I'm man. done. Sounds like the tour bus is out there. It might be. Might be coming through the wall. Could be. Time for us to get on the road. All right, it, I got to go. You guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned till next Friday when you'll see another episode of what we got going on here at BEM. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bringing us into your hearts, into your home. I can't tell you how much Bob and I appreciate it. We know you've got other things to do in the world, but we thank you very much. From Bangor, Maine to, I mean, all the way out there, Bob, where is it? In the USSR. I mean, we've got people all over the place who join us. Thank you. We sincerely mean that. We appreciate your love and support, and we appreciate you allowing us to be part of your life. Let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's open the door for somebody who's got their hands full. Please, let's open that door. Can we please? If somebody's got holes in their shoes, give them a pair of yours. Guys, you've got some sweaty old sneakers in the trunk that do better for their feet than it would for yours. And if somebody's hungry, standing at the corner, veteran, anything that says, we'll work for food, Right across the street, you see that through your windshield? There's a Sitco, 7-Eleven, Sunoco. There's something sitting over there. Take that person right across the street and buy them a power bar and a protein drink. It's cheaper than your designer cup of coffee. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's make sure we reach out and do things that help others and make you feel good as well. Sales at BubbasExoticMotorsports.com will answer all of your questions or show topics will be seen right here. We take your advice. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep on doing it Bubba style.